In 1825, a father became so infuriated by his son's lackluster performance at school, he roared at him, you care for nothing but shooting and dogs and rat catching. You will be a disgrace to yourself and all your family. If a father said that to a little cherub like this today, he would have social services knocking at his door. And as far as being a disgrace to all his family, well, Charles's, Charles's father could not have been more incorrect because Charles's descendants have been tickle pink ever since to have such an ancestor. Over the next 10 minutes, I'd like to take you on a voyage around the world with Charles Darwin. And we will also discover whether Charles has any wisdom for us that could be useful. I think what you may find particularly useful is what Charles called his golden rule, a rule that if you adopt, not only was it the reason for his success, he claimed, but it could give you equal rewards. It starts, I feel no remorse for having committed any great sin, but I have often and often regretted that I haven't done more direct good for our fellow creatures. We all have a natural lift in life, don't we? Some of you are naturally funny, others of you are naturally good-looking. In fact, looking at you all, you're all absolutely stunning. <laughs> My natural lift in life has been to be related to Charles Darwin, and it, is, it has been fantastic. Well, it hasn't always been fantastic. My nickname at school was The Missing Link. <laughs> <laughs> and, and after I failed a biology exam, oops, my, my friends told me I must be devolving back to the primordial swamp. <laughs> but my grandmother, a Maggie Smith-type character, gave me the advice of my life. Christopher, if you cannot be first, be peculiar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In 1828, Charles made a rather peculiar decision to become a creationist vicar. You see, in those days, all churches believed the Bible literally. God had made all the animals and, animals and plants in their present form, and they couldn't change. And in his greatest moment of blissful creation, he made man. Charles graduated, but before becoming a creationist vicar, he set off on a most ornate gap year to circumnavigate the planet. Even at the age of 22, he was polishing up what he called his golden rule, a rule that, I, that he claimed would give him uh, all of his success in life. It goes like this. Pay special attention to verifiable evidence that contradicts one of your beliefs. Why is that so important? As you sit in a green and pleasant English garden, as butterflies drift between flower beds, it is easy to believe that here is all the evidence you'll ever need that God made all the animals and plants for human pleasure and convenience. But as Charles dived into the red in tooth and claw South American rainforest, a central belief was immediately contradicted. How, why had an all-loving God created such vicious creatures? In the Galapagos Islands, a second belief was contradicted. The tortoises on each of the islands are slightly different. Is it possible over long periods of time that animals and plants can evolve? In Australia, a third belief was contradicted. It appeared that Mother Nature was in decline. Charles predicted extinctions, and sure enough today, Australia has the worst rate of mammal extinctions of any country in the world. <laughs> At what point did Charles start to ponder about the possibility of an ape origin? Well, we don't know. But after a five-year epic circumnavigation, the brain of this 27-year-old was fizzing. At about the same age, my brain was fizzing with a slightly less ambitious idea to become a climbing guide. 
My friends were delighted. After seven years in the, in the jungle of advertising, I was back in the family business. I was a professional ape. <laughs> when we had the idea for the world's highest dinner party, we climbed up the mountain, set up the dining room tables and chairs on the summit, got into our ball dresses and top hat and tails, and had the dinner. Little did we know that climbing up the other side of the mountain were two Argentinian brothers. They had not seen anyone during their arduous five-day <laughs> assault. Ha, ha, ha. And I will never forget the expression on the face of the first brother when his head popped up and saw this. <laughs> He couldn't have been more surprised than if he found Charles on the summit. <laughs> Charles decided he couldn't become a creationist vicar. Instead, he found the love of his life, Emma Wedgwood, a woman of considerable intelligence and fortitude. Over the next 20 years, a terrifying theory materialized. Even the gardener was getting frustrated. On one occasion, Charles, the gardener watched Charles gaze intently for 10 minutes at an individual rose. And afterwards, the gardener confided with the cook, if only Mr. Darwin would get a job, he might achieve something in life. <laughs> if you decide to adopt Charles's golden rule, I think it could help you achieve. But it may also give you moments of discomfort. Let me give you an example. Knowing that Charles's um, unfinished business was the extinction of species, I was amazed when I discovered apparently we're living today in a mass extinction of species. Now, ordinarily, I would throw that sort of doom and gloom into the mental dustbin and get back to the party. But Charles's golden rule inspires you to investigate any evidence that contradicts one of your beliefs. Report after report indicated that if we do not st stop the destruction by the end of this century, maybe as high as 50% of the species on the planet will be extinct. When my wife, Jack, and I had our children, it changed our perspectives. We realized that the only reason why this gorgeous planet is going to be a paradise for our children is because of the services that the natural world offers us for free, oxygen. The ozone layer, clean water, food. Jack and I realized that this mass extinction of species was a children's issue. And as parents, we had to do something about it. We discovered that the reason for the, gr the greatest reason for land species declining is due to habitat destruction by the livestock industry. The greatest reason for marine species decline is due to the fishing industry. Both of these industries are providing us with protein. I felt deeply uncomfortable. I felt like this monkey. For goodness sake, my mother's family business was raising livestock, and there is nothing I love more in this world than a steak with Bernays sauce and chips on either side. To complete Darwin's unfinished business, was I going to have to become a vegetarian? I'm not that nice. <laughs> it was then that we discovered the, the silver bullet. Because it takes so much less land to grow vegetable protein than animal protein, if we all ate meat just two to four times a week, the world, there'd be no need to cut down any more of the world's forests, the global fish stocks would start to recover, and we'd be well on the way to stopping the global mass extinction of species. Now, Encouraging you to eat meat just two to four times a week is a big ask. So here's a nice, easy first step. Try and have one meatless day a week, a meatless Monday or a tofu Tuesday. <laughs> How are we going to launch this campaign, PR campaign for Mother Nature? In October 2016, I would like to invite you all to bicycle across America with us, hence the bald eagle. You can join us on a bicycle, or you can join us on the web. It'll be fun. In a fun and spectacular manner, we will attempt to save five species from extinction. But our aim is to inspire the greatest meat-eating culture in the world, 
America to adopt a meatless Monday. The expedition is called Darwin's Unfinished Business. In 1859, Charles Darwin had other unfinished business to attend to. He was preparing to detonate his meticulously designed bomb on the origin of the species was published. The polemical impact of the origin is softened for us by 150 years of post-Darwinian thought. But at the time, these shockwaves ripped through the intellectual world. Darwin was named the most dangerous man in Britain. When Queen Victoria was told that a certain Mr. Darwin had come up with a theory which indicated that all humans, including the royal family, are apes. <laughs> she is said to have gone bright red and announced, if this theory is found to be true, I trust it will never become widely known. <laughs> Charles wrote 21 books. He was a loving husband and father, and he was buried in Westminster Abbey beside Sir Isaac Newton. Late in life, he had penned, I feel no remorse for having committed any great sin, but I have often and often regretted that I have not done more direct good to our fellow creatures. Thank you very much.